Hello everyone, Tim Brown, welcome back to my Apple Podcast and welcome back to this follow-up episode where I'm covering the website application Responsive Layout Maker Pro, which enables you to design responsive websites on your Mac. During the last episode, I covered two of the basic features of the application, including the layout portion and how to use elements. For parts three and four, I'm going to continue to flesh out the elements, and then modify my project using the properties panel, and then show you how to modify your project after everything has been exported. So for those of you who are just tuning in, as a recap, basically I'm creating a website to review three applications for the iPhone. I have a home page, and I have three additional pages, each page devoted to each application. In order to keep the layout simple, I created one layout for the home page, which you see here, and I went up to the layouts menu, and went to manage project and I just duplicated my index page and renamed them to coincide with the applications that I'm featuring and then went in and made slight modifications to each page to coincide with what I want to do throughout the project. So this is the home page. When I go to the next page, which is handy photo, you can see here on the third row where the images are, I just swapped out the image links for just plain images. But everything else is pretty much the same. The only thing that's going to be different that is on the home page at the bottom where the image is, I'm going to have my logo. On the other pages, I'm actually going to swap out the image placeholder here with a YouTube video tutorial. So that's actually going to cover a portion of the tutorial that addresses video embeds. Okay, now that I have a basic layout, I need to make some slight adjustments to my project using the properties panel. The first thing I'm going to do is change the background color and then I'm going to go and change the color of the fonts and then reposition things. So let's go to layout first and I'm going to select grid. When you select grid in the layout mode, you're basically selecting the entire project. So when I go into properties with grid selected, when I scroll down to the bottom here where it says background, I'll be able to change the color of the entire page. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And from this color picker here, I'm going to choose a color for my background. I'm now going to go through each page and add that hex color. Okay, the background color has been adjusted to all of my pages. Now I want to go ahead and make some adjustments to the alignment. Everything right now is flush left with the exception of the title. I want everything to be centered. So I'm going to start with the index page and then use the same formula for each page. So the line underneath the title or heading needs to be flush center. So with that selected, I'm going to go to properties and then scroll down to the bottom and you see you have the option to center the text and that's what I'm going to do. Likewise with the image link or any image that you have on your page, when you select it, you want to go to the properties panel and then scroll down to margins. And then you want to select both auto options. And when you do that, you'll notice that it will automatically center the image. So I'm going to select the second one, scroll down to the properties panel here where it says margins, and then select both auto options. To ensure that your images are centered on the page, after you select them and go to the properties panel, you also want to make sure that the display says block rather than in block. Then select the auto options. In addition to alignment adjustments, you can also use the properties panel to change the color of your font as well, including the type of font. So for example, my title is in Helvetica, uh, but it has been set up by default as Georgia for the paragraph text. So I wanna go ahead and change that. I also wanna change the font color to be white. Okay, so now if I use the navigation buttons to navigate through my pages, you can see that everything has been adjusted using the properties panel, including aligning my text and images and changing the font and or color. So let's see what it looks like when we view it in a browser. So here is my site. It's responsive. Everything is centered. So when I move from right to left to consider how the site might look on a smaller device, this is how it breaks down. And the only thing I do not have set up yet are the links, and that's what I'm going to show you next. 
So you can begin by updating your metadata first. So when you select on one of these image link placeholders here and you look in the properties panel on the right hand side, you see that I have a class set up by default and I went in manually and added the ID to give more specific details about those image links. And since each one represents a link to one of the photo applications that I'm featuring, I just simply went through and added the name of each photo application as the ID. Down below you see an export path. This is where your files are going to be stored. You have to add those yourself because you're actually storing those files somewhere else. If you already know what the names are and you know they're gonna be in an IMG folder after the export, you could just simply enter the path IMG slash handy photo dot JPEG. Likewise, if you already know the link and you know it's going to handy photo HTML, then you can add it that way. Now what's great though, since you have to go in and edit the HTML pages anyway, you don't actually have to add this information at this point. You can choose to hold off and, and wait and add that when you go into the HTML pages later on. Okay, this section took a lot longer than expected, so I'm going to wrap this up as part three. For part four, I want you to check out my next tutorial where I'm going to go over specific details regarding how you update your HTML files after your project has been exported. How can you adjust the code to also accommodate video embeds? Thanks for tuning in once again to my Apple podcast. My name is Tim Brown. Please check out the next episode.